Hello and Namaste. In continuation with the non-linear programming problems, we have already taken the brief introduction about the conductor conditions along with the specific um, in, uh, conditions with one inequality, two inequality with two variables. Let us discuss how to solve the question with the one inequality and with the two variables so that you can make it generalized later on whenever you need it. Now this is the this is the slide I would I would like to keep it as it is because this is the slide which we have discussed in the last session. Please follow the I button to reach to the previous session of brief introduction about the conductor condition or it's also known as Karush conductor conditions with the generalized form as well as one inequality as well as the two inequalities which we have discussed on uh, the last follow this with the I button. Now, if you have the question, uh, I have purposely kept this particular, uh, the, uh, the summarization of the last slide so that you will be able to see how to find it out all these conditions simultaneously along with this. So, this is what the part I have kept it for the reference. Question is find uh, or the solve the following NLPP using the conductor condition or method. Maximize z equals to 2x1 square minus 7x2 square plus 12x1 x2 subject to the constraints 2x1 plus 5x2 is less than equals to 98. x1 x2 is greater than equals to 0. Now here we have to define first k. k is f minus lambda times g. Now what is this? This first, first is f. This is g. So, we have to have two variables. So, we, we can check that x1 and x2. These are the two variables and we will be getting only one g. That is, we are having only one constraint in this example. So, we are defining k f minus lambda times g. So, it is 2x1. So, this is what I have written as f minus lambda times this is the g. So, this is g, this is lambda and this is f. Then we have to differentiate k with respect to x1. So, if you will observe here in this particular uh, 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 this equation or k here the this is the function this is the term which contains x1 this is the term which contains x1 and this is the term which contains x1 rest of the x2 will be having the constant or you can say the differentiation of that with respect to x1 will come out to be 0 so we have to consider 1 2 3 terms only so the first term 4x1 second term 12x1 x2 the differentiation comes out to be 12x2 Third term is minus lambda 2x1. So, this particular term would be lambda into 2x1. That would come as just minus times 2 lambda which is equal to 0. That comes out to be. So, if we will take it out 2 out from this particular uh, uh, equation here. We will be getting 2x1 plus 6x2 minus lambda equals to 0. That is the first condition. If you will observe, this is the first condition. Second is k with respect to x2. Again, if you will observe here this particular equation. We are having the x2 term here, the variable x2 is present here, here and here. Again, the three terms, 98, the differentiation would come to 0 because of this uh, constant here. Similarly, 2x1, the differentiation would come out to be 0. S same thing with minus 2 lambda x1 term. So, we are not supposed to consider this terms for the differentiation. So, differentiation come out, comes out to be minus 14x2 plus 12x1 minus 5 lambda is equal to 0. We can rewrite this as 12x1 minus 14x2 minus 5 lambda is equal to 0. That is the second condition we have solved it here. The third condition is lambda into g is equal to lambda into g. g is nothing but the constraint. So, if you will observe here, this constraint we have to take it as 2x1 plus 5x2 minus 98. So, that means what? This is nothing but the constraint g. So, this is 2x1 plus 5x2 minus 98 is equal to 0. That is the third constraint or condition here. Con condition, uh, we will not call it as a constraint. We will call it as a condition. G is less than or equal to 0. That means the, con the constraint is less than or equal to 0. That is this one, fourth one. Then lambda is greater than or equal to 0. Check this out. The, optim the objective function is of max type or maximization type. So, we do have to consider the lambda greater than or equal to 0 for the maximization. So, this is what is the fifth condition. Sixth condition would be both of them, both the variables greater than or equal to 0, non-negativity constraint for the variables. Then, if you will observe in the equation third, either lambda equals to 0 or g equals to 0. That means we have to consider now lambda into g is equal to lambda into this 2x1 plus 5x2 is minus 98 is 0. 
let me call uh, take you to the next page this is what we have left the last last slide for then the next case is we will be having two different cases as i have told you either lambda is equals to 0 or either g equals to 0 so we will be considering the first case when the lambda is coming out to be 0 when the lambda comes out to be 0 the first condition or the first condition is coming out to be this second is this now as lambda is coming out to be 0 that means this will go to 0 this will also term will go to 0 we will remain here with the first again taking out this 2 out it will be giving up giving us x1 plus 3 x2 is equals to 0 second constraint or second condition will gives us this 12 14 so we have taken uh, again uh, 2 out so it is 6 x1 minus 7 x2 is equals to 0 if we will solve these two equations simultaneously we are going to get x1 is equals to x2 equals to 0 that means here we are getting this z which is the value or the objective function is this one as z and but z is coming out to be 0 so if you we'll observe here we will not have the feasible solution for this particular assumption that we have assumed that lambda equals to 0 for this assumption we have not got the feasible solution and hence we will not be having this so assumption lambda equals to 0 is not correct and therefore we need to reject this particular case where the lambda is coming out to be 0 so we are rejecting of saying lambda is equals to 0 so this is what the first case is of rejection second case is so we have said that the lambda is equals to 0 now let us say that g is equals to 0 if we are saying g is equals to 0 means 2x1 plus 5x2 minus 98 is equals to 0 now again from the first condition we are having this 2x1 plus 6x2 minus lambda is equals to 0 if you will observe here in the second condition here we have got the lambda with the minus 5 as the coefficient and that's the reason we have multiplied the first condition with 5 after that we will be getting 10x1 plus 30x2 minus 5 lambda is equals to 0 second condition is this now what we have to do it we have to subtract both of them if we will subtract it because of this negative sign present here we will be having this term negative this would be positive and this would be positive because of that 5 lambda we have done this exercise to eliminate one of the variable out of x1 x2 and lambda so we have eliminated lambda out of it so we will have the equation in terms of x1 and x2 which is minus 2x1 plus 44x2 is equals to 0 that means from here we will be getting because we have got this as the first equation 2x1 plus 5x2 minus 98 is equals to 0 check this out this is the one equation and the another equation we got it as 2x1 plus 5x2 is equals to 98 if we we'll solve these two equations simultaneously we are going to get the values of x1 as 44 x2 as 2 and if you we'll check that check that particular value in, in the any of the constraints so let us check it in the first condition what we have done it here in this case so at that time you will understand that 2 into 44 that is 2x1 plus 6x2 minus lambda is equals to 0 that means 2 into 44 plus 6 into 2 minus lambda is equals to 0 that is lambda is coming out to be 100 which is positive or greater than equals to 0 so that means what the condition of satisfying this this condition is getting satisfied from this particular that means the values of x1 is 44 and x2 is 2 so satisfying all the necessary conditions and hence the optimal solution uh, raised at x1 as 42 x2 is 2 and what is the value of z max z max is we have to put the value here in this uh, objective function will be getting the value as 4900 as the value for this particular first question of optimization and that is of maximization type let us see uh, the another question which is of minimization i would like to address the minimization also once this is the uh, objective function as x1 cube minus 4x1 minus 2x2 constraint is this so again this is f this is g and this is a non-negativity constraint we will define quickly k we will be differentiating k with respect to x1 as we did it in the last case we are doing it with respect to x1 this is the term we have with x1 this is the term we have with x1 this is the term we have with x1 so we will having 3x1 square minus 4 minus lambda is equals to 0 first condition is got satisfied the actually we have stated the first condition second with respect to x2 let me just put an arrow if you have any query then this is x2 is term over here this is the term over here so minus 2 minus lambda is 0 that is lambda is coming out to be minus of 2 
Lambda is coming out to be minus of 2. That is the second. We have got it. Third is the product of them. Lambda into g is equal to 0. That is the third one. Fourth condition is g is less than or equal to 0. That is this is the condition. x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 1. Fifth condition is lambda is less than is equal to 0. Why are we considering lambda less than or equal to 0? Check this out. The condition I have already written. Whenever we are defining or whenever we are uh, dealing with the minimization constraint of the conductor, we have to take the fifth constraint, lambda is less than or equal to 0. If we have a maximization, we are considering as greater than or equal to 0. But as we are dealing here with the min minimization, we have to take the lambda less than or equal to 0. And then the non-negativity constraint as the sixth one. Again, the same thing, product is coming out to be 0. Taking to the next page over here, but... While taking, because we have to have uh, consider here two different cases. But if you observe in the last uh, slide here, check this one, second one. We have got it lambda, the value of lambda is already minus 2. We got it here. We do not have any x1, x2 in the second condition. We have directly got the value of lambda equals to minus 2, which is not 0 for this particular example. That means we can't take the value of lambda is equals to 0. That means if we will, uh, uh, we uh, have understood that this is not, that is minus 2 which is not equals to 0. That means what ultimately g has to be equals to 0. That is what we have written here. g has to be equals to 0. That is x1 plus x2 minus 1 is 0. That is x1 plus x2 is equals to 0. Now again from one first condition what we have got it as this is equals to 0. We have to check that that is 3x1 square minus 4 minus. So we have replaced the lambda, the value of lambda as minus 2. We have got 3x1 square is equal to 2, which gives us the value of x1 directly as square root of 2 by 3, which is nothing but 0 0.8165. If we have got the value of x1, we can easily get the value of x2 from this particular equation. That is 1 minus 0 0.8165. I have purposely kept this as, as it is so that it will be easy for us to go for the calculations. You will find it out very easy uh, by keeping this answer as it is in this term. Because if you observe here, we have got very simple number 1 minus square root of 2 by 3. So rather than to have the perfect number, I have I've kept it as it is. So x1 is square root of 2 by 3 and x2 is 0 point, uh, 1, sorry, 1 minus 0 0.8165. Now, this value satisfy all the condition if you will observe here because lambda is already minus 2 which is coming out to be less than or equals to 0 already. So, it satisfied all the conditions. Therefore, optimal solution will arise at this point. This is actually I have uh, okay this is fine. This is x1 the value is x1 of square root of 2 by 3 that is that is nothing but 0 0.8165. So, please make the correction here. This is just 0 0.8165 but x2 is 1 minus the value of x1. So, z minimum is coming out to be here as minus of 3.0887 as the answer for this particular case. Now, if you will observe why I have kept it as it is if you are solving the question paper and you, you can easily check this out. This is 4 times minus 4 times 0 0.8165 and if you will open this bracket up, this would be minus 2 minus of minus plus 2 times 0 0.8165. So, it would be easy for you to go and calculate this might be on a calculator, might be manually would be difficult, but yes, calculator will give you the answer very fast in this case. So, this is what is the optimization Z minimum. How to deal with the minimization question of conductor with one cons one inequality constraint and how to deal with the maximization that, I've, that we have discussed in detail in this particular session. And this is what is my favorite, which is known as a self-observation slide. I have given you the maximization cases in both the cases along with the answers present over here. Please do solve. If at all any query for you all, just let me know in the comment section so that I can address those uh, queries uh, through the comment section or might be I will be uh, dealing with the upcoming videos. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy learning.